duh, in order to get ready to audition, you need to learn acting things, do scene study, learn how to act, all of that. But we're not talking about that because you already know that. What we're gonna talk about is how you're going to get to those auditions, headshots, resume, getting yourself tape, gear together and creating a little clip of your acting so when you submit two jobs they will actually ask you to send in an audition because they got a little taste of your acting hopefully you've seen part one and part two because we're in part three i am an actor telling you what you should do if you want to get into acting as if you were my best friend number one tip for headshots is that it needs to look like you <laughs> when you come in in person they're like yes that's the person i was expecting make sure that you give it to a few people that know you in real life talk to you interact with you and ask them which headshot looks the most like me but it's going to take time for you to get comfortable in front of the camera and learn what headshots work for you what headshots that you submit actually get attention and book you certain roles this specific route of your headshots i think is smart in not wasting a bunch of money if you were my best friend i would just grab my phone and take a photo of you because I have. This is my best friend Jasmine and this is a photo a professional photographer took of her. And then this is a photo I took of her on like an iPhone 10 or something. Both of them look like her. I think both of them are pretty good quality. If this was for her first day going out for auditions, I believe she would get self-tape requests. DIY it. You don't necessarily have to use this headshot for trying to audition for big jobs. But if you have a little bit more time to do some research and contact people and explore, there's still another free way where you can get headshots from an actual photographer. Look into universities near you and see if there's a photography pro program or even photographers that ju just wanted to do different test shoots where they're like, okay, I really want to take pictures of jewelry. So will you be my model to take pictures of these earrings? And you can be like, yes, since you're not getting paid for it, you can say, okay, we can do a photo shoot for your jewelry, but will you also take photos of me like a headshot like this? So if you really, really don't know what your type is right now, it's okay. Just wear something solid and take a picture of you, what you look like. Do some in different moods, some smiling, some serious. Those are super basic, but at least we can see what your face looks like. And you can provide them with examples of exactly what you want your headshot to look like. And how you're going to find that is, I think the best way is by looking at agencies' websites and looking at their, their talent. Once in a while, photographers or different community organizations will also organize pop-up photo sessions. These are usually catered towards um, people having like a professional LinkedIn photo, but LinkedIn photos, the framing is very close to an actual headshot. If you are in an acting class, you can try and talk to the instructor or the manager of the studio and see if they have done this before or are willing to bring in a photographer and do a group session of headshots. This will save you some money also when you do go and submit to agents because they're going to pitch you a very specific way. So if you show them all of these headshots where you look great, you don't have any headshots that look like a college student. So I need you to go get those and they'll give you probably a few different things that they're going to pitch you as but they're going to want you to have new headshots so it is i believe a waste of time to try and get amazing headshots on your way in ultimately of course headshots are so important and you should get some amazing ones later on but Get those once you have somebody that will give you specific advice and give you specific people that you should go get your headshots at, like somebody that knows a little bit more than me about your situation. Resumes are dead. The normal paper resumes, those basically you never use them just as you almost never print out your headshot. I have made videos in the past about resumes. I don't really think you need it, but you can go ahead and, and make one, but you should print it out in eight by 10, your headshot and your resume in case one day you get a call back or go into an in-person audition. So you have it ready. And if somebody wants it, you have it. What replaced those paper resumes are casting website resumes, which are much better because not only do you have all the same information, but there's a link where people can click and see you in action in that job. Now that we can almost start submitting to the auditions, we need somewhere to film the auditions because last year I did 112 auditions and all of them 
were either Zoom auditions or self-tape auditions. Minimum, like if you're going to shoot a self-tape right now with whatever you have at home, is going to be stacking a bunch of stuff and putting your phone eye level. That's the most important part, put it eye level. A tiny bit of space at the top of your head. You wanna be center in order to not look like the wall behind you needs to be blank, a solid wall. Try and get this framing as best as possible. And how you're gonna get this is by making sure that your eyes are right where the camera is. What camera are you gonna use? Your phone, please use your phone. Your phone is good enough if you have at least 720p, honestly, for self-tape auditions, that's totally fine. Because if you have good framing, a lot of other things are going to be a little bit more forgiving. Um, lighting, sound, like you just wanna be able to be heard. Like, can we hear your voice? How distracting are other things around you? Along the way, you'll be like, huh, the lighting happens to be really good in my room at like 4 p.m. One step up would be getting a tripod. And ring lights usually have a phone mount so that you can set your phone there. So it's like two-in-one lighting and a tripod. Definitely suggest that. Um, casting workbook still has a few self-tape kits. I've talked about this in the past. The next step after that, which is one that will require a lot more money and if you have the funds for it, go ahead and just get nice things now because I've made the mistake of having to buy things again and again and again and again and like now I've wasted so much money. But get a good tripod. I have an Amazon storefront thing where I link all of the things that I use. Of course, you might know that I love Savage paper backdrops. They have like a website for themselves. The tripods for the paper backdrops, you can get a really cheap one on Amazon. But if you have pets or kids or anybody who might break it they will break it because they're so wobbly you're going to spend about 100 150 dollars more to get really sturdy ones like this these ones and they're going to last you a long time the paper you really can't go wrong with like a studio blue like this one or a thunder gray like this one basically my advice for the self-taped studio is to do it as basic as possible, save up your money, and then get good quality items that you're going to keep forever. So after you set up your self-tape studio, you're going to be ready to film something. You should practice self-tapes, and there's a bunch of different ways that you can do that. You can search for monologues, and I've done monologues um, competitions in the past on my channel. You are more than welcome to use those monologues and put them as your acting clip on casting websites. Google Pilots, there's a bunch of scripts out there. There's a bunch of websites dedicated for monologues and scenes that you can use. Castability is also a great app if you want to practice scenes. Using all of those to practice and then once you see some you're like oh I really connected with this uh, this the character and I think I did good. You can save that video and put it on your casting profiles and submit to auditions because you're going to get way more self-tape audition requests if you have a headshot, something on your resume, but especially a clip of you acting and showing them what you look like, what you sound like, what you act like right now. A reel is way more important than a headshot if you are just starting out or the, at least don't even think of it as a reel, just a clip of you acting because you will be able to convince more people that you should be in their project. It's gonna be an indie, it's gonna be a student film, it's gonna be some student film, something like that, but it's way better to have you in action and see your quality of acting right now. Once you start booking some stuff, short films, student films, TV shows, whatever, you're going to be able to grab those and replace the things that you did on your own. If you were my best friend, I would of course tell you, send me your self-tape auditions and I will give you feedback. I will tell you, you know, what I think you can improve. I'm opening up a way where you can send in your self-tape auditions. Again, not as an acting coach, but I'm honestly just going to give you feedback from as much as I can because I'm not gonna be able to coach you and tell you exactly how you can be an amazing actor because that's gonna take more than just like a reply to an email. But I can recommend different acting classes if I know your area, basically California. Um, I can recommend different books, exercises, your framing, your lighting, your sound, like maybe little things that you haven't noticed, I'll be able to give you feedback. And I don't know how long I'm gonna leave this open because in the past, like a bunch of people will tell me, I wanna send you my self tapes, I want feedback. And then when I finally open it up, it's like crickets. So I'm just gonna wait and see like how many people submit and then once that link is gone from the description then that means it's closed but i will do it again in the future in the next video in this one we're going to make 
casting website accounts. I'm going to show you mine and you can give me feedback. You can tell me like Belgica, that one headshot doesn't really look like you. It's a little awkward, but take it off and I'll be like, cool. Thank you for your feedback. So let's go make some casting websites, profiles.